Seattle, Washington. Edward Floyd is only 13 years old, but he has grown-up ideas and grown-up ability, too. This is a real automobile with a half-horsepower motor, which he made himself from odds and ends at a cost of $13. And note the ultra-modern design with engine in the rear. Edward carries a paper roof and does it at eight miles an hour on a pint of gas a day. Now, how's that for enterprise? He'll make a name for himself someday. Boys, sell your papers before the glass dome of the train of tomorrow. The experimental train undergoes trial runs between Chicago and Lansing, Michigan, as General Motors unveils its contribution to luxury travel. The dining car accommodates 52 on its two levels. And if you care for liquid refreshments, just have a look at this lounge car paneled in rare wood. The engineer of the 100 mile an hour diesel gets his orders by radio phone as the scenery unfolds three ways. As for the busy executive, he's never out of touch. The radio phone gets him any point with the twist of a dial. The laminated glass which encloses the cars of tomorrow's train was tested in the windshields of battle planes. A new age in train travel makes its bow. 150 gallons of motor fuel spread over 600 feet become a gigantic pool of flame. It's a demonstration of the Navy's newest fire extinguisher called Purple K. Three tragic fires aboard aircraft carriers led to its development. Navy officials said the fires shouldn't have happened. Purple K may be the answer for a recommended massive fire extinguishing system. One man in 25 seconds dramatically proves its power. However, Columbia quickly becomes a daunting challenge for NASA. Its complex makeup had engineers struggling constantly to reduce Columbia's weight and simplify construction. Especially frustrating was keeping the orbiter's ceramic tiles attached to its fuselage. More than 25,000 of them fit together to protect Columbia from the searing 3,000 degree heat of re-entry. Throughout the city of Lancaster for uh, RTV, which was the, the material we used to glue the tiles on with. More glue did keep the tiles in place. However, water was literally ripping them apart. It turns out in the instant we hit rain, the tiles almost exploded. The tiles fabrication process was modified and the problem overcome.
missile come closer and closer together, each one evolving toward the ideal long-range weapon system combining the advantages of both. One you can get right off the ground at maximum speed and up to altitude, but also one that you can divert or else recall. You give this experimental airplane the speed and altitude the missile has, or put this cockpit or control panel detached in its blockhouse now, put that back into the missile's airframe, and then give the pilot the equipment he needs to withstand acceleration and heat, and to overcome weightlessness of zero gravity. You lick these problems, and a few more like them, and you won't have a man and a missile, you'll have an Air Force pilot in a spacecraft. Man will be in space. And that may happen a whole lot sooner than we think it will. Because space is for us what the unknown land once was, the uncharted sea. A place into which all of man's history, everything he is and all that he's ever been and done compels him to move. He has no choice. And like the explorers of the past, he may have to fight up there. And that's why the Air Force has to do what it's always had to do. Get up higher and go faster than the other fellow. Because war, if it comes, it'll not confine itself to air, but it'll expand into the billions of space miles surrounding us. That's, that's the only way it all makes sense. Missiles and airplanes both defending us today and manned spacecraft tomorrow. Now, I don't know whether I've answered all the questions we started out with. Why so many weapons? What are they for? What are we doing with this big force? I think we're buying more than the aircraft and the missiles we've been talking about. I think we're buying peace. I think we're investing in the future by deterring war. We have to, because... Well, look here. The lights are on in my house tonight. My wife and children are asleep upstairs. And we've got to keep it that way. Lights burning, children asleep, and peace and security everywhere.